without getting into too many details, one of the things that I wanted to kind of put in that article, and there's also a um, certification out there now for physique specialists or something like that, bodybuilding mm-hmm. specialists. And the thing that's so tough is that everyone wants to use diuretics. Diuretics are the, are the big mm-hmm. thing that just everyone just throws in there, and they're, they're absolutely not necessary. But you actually have seven studies published. Do I have that many? I haven't. Yeah, yeah I, haven't out, I, I added went them to PubMed. Yeah, there's a few. There's and, a few things. Yeah, mainly from my graduate school days. But yeah, All right. But recently, you published one about peak week recommendations for bodybuilders and evidence based approach. Yeah, and this is now. I mean, how many people are using this this study to actually start peaking their for their competition, or also help to peak their athletes? I mean, I'm I get so these happy. questions all the time. What do you think about this article? I said it's one of the best articles you will ever read. Yeah, when it comes to peak yeah. week, <laughs> Guillermo Escalante, who headed up that whole that whole um, that whole study, that whole article, just brought me in sort of at the last minute. Someone else couldn't fulfill their role. They brought me in. I'm like, ah, oh, this is awesome. This has been my wheelhouse for so long. It's a it's just a, such a right. cool topic, and it's so intricate. And um, and I, without getting into too many details, one of the things that I wanted to kind of put in that article, and there's also a um, uh, certification out there now. Um, for what they call them physique specialists or something like that, bodybuilding mm-hmm. specialists. And the thing that's so tough is that everyone wants to use diuretics. Diuretics are the are the big mm-hmm. thing that just everyone just throws in there. And they're they're absolutely not necessary. Unless you're someone who has impaired kidney function for mm-hmm. some reason or, or another. And I've had a few people that couldn't respond to normal water and sodium manipulation. One guy was taking like two grams of caffeine a day just to stay alive he was getting up and personal training from like 4 a.m to like 8 at night and, and then doing prep was, at the same time and then he was dieting down right so he came <laughs> to me like four weeks out it's like okay i'm like i'm like what's your cat and I, I, thought, I thought it was a typo i thought maybe he you know he, he missed a decimal point somewhere in there or something um but it was like two grams so he didn't respond people that have right. been prescribed like lasix for high blood pressure i've seen that before mm-hmm. their kidneys are kind of shocked but Anyway, that was such a nice thing to be able to put out there to see, so so many people could see that you don't need pharmaceuticals to do a peak week. And if you need to manipulate water, hopefully you're in good enough shape. You don't have to do anything as far as that goes. But it can be done yeah, so really effectively. With right. numerous All you need to yeah. do is bring two bricks, two <laughs> bricks, and put them under the foot end of your um, uh, of your bed so you can sleep right. at a sloped angle and bring all that water down. I did this with my wife and one of my uh, drug-free clients for many years yeah. because we couldn't use diuretics uh, because mm-hmm. they were in, uh, you know test uh, competing in drug-tested federations. So all you can do is you know maybe a little bit of caffeine and of course sleeping at a slope. But I would usually mm-hmm. put their legs on pillows, and and so mm-hmm. that's why I like this article so much because it kind of confirmed what I was doing for a while. Like, wait a minute, this actually has scientific evidence now. And, and it's just for people who are wondering, it's not just legs on the pillows. You have to have the whole mm-hmm. body on the decline. So you right. get the increased venous return to the heart and get the atrial natriuretic peptide released. So we'll put the legs up and that's good. Then you won't have water that'll settle in your legs. Right. But to get the whole body diuretic effect or natriuretic effect, diuretic effect, mm-hmm. you have to do Salt. that. And yeah and that's just a cool we don't need to go into that here because it's kind of our purpose but that was just kind of cool how i pieced that together from literally from nasa research you know looking at space (laughs) yeah that's that's where where you got it from right from space flight that's where i stole it from yeah yeah like it causes diuretic effect but and they were trying to Uh mimic people in space we don't have the the gravity don't have the hydrostatic pressure pulling your water down so you put people inverted in their bed six degrees Mm -hmm. matched what they saw in terms of, of plasma volume loss in astronauts so like okay so we can probably use this and maybe do a little bit more if needed and, and get a diuretic. Right. It works for at least two or three pounds on most yeah, people. No, it, it's very effective. It's very mm-hmm. effective. So every time, you know, f- on YouTube, you have all these uh, professional bodybuilders, they do pre-contest footage, right? They make mm-hmm. a YouTube video about it. And I'm sure they're shoving all the stones underneath the bed so they can hide the secret of what's really going on. Yeah. I mean, you're saving, literally saving kidneys this way because the over diuretic, yeah. especially in the 90s and 2000s, I mean... People would use anything as a diuretic, including those mercury-based diuretic drinks that uh, mm. Chad Nichols supposedly had. Yeah, um, you know, destroyed a lot of kidneys in the in the nineties and two thousands with the diuretic testing. So I wish <laughs> I wish those guys knew about this now, uh, back then. Yeah, yeah. Some of the stuff wasn't done. The research really hadn't been done until like the nineties. 
Um, All right. I heard, learned about this from a guy named Victor Convertino. He worked for NASA. He was um, mm-hmm. he did a lot of this stuff. And a really guy came and did a test le- a, a guest lecture when I was in grad school. I'm like, oh, this is really cool stuff. There's just so much yeah. there. Right. I wonder too. The thing that's maybe is the issue, and you, you've seen this probably with your clients. The big deal with diuretics is there. I I suspect there's some short term, maybe somewhat long term damage that happens to the kidneys when someone starts with. You know, they start taking their diuretics a week out, you know, the seven mm-hmm. to 10 day out old school protocol. After that, you're not going to respond to these sorts of things. You're going to, you're pr- pretty much stuck going the pharmaceutical route, right? I think um, that there's a permanent, permanent adaptation process. If you really crush your, or, or manipulate your renin angiotensin aldosterone system with aldactone for a week and then uh, yeah, yeah. flush everything oh, yeah. out with Lasix or hydrochlorothiazide and triam, 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 Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's. I think there's something that that is. It can last for weeks at least. Yeah. Um, now there's some overcompensation be, afterwards. Oh yeah. So desensitization, something mm-hmm. like that. That you and you know you can't, for instance, do a practice run even two weeks out with diuretics and then expect it to work the same way. And mm-hmm. guys who use try to do several shows in a row, like that's why it's such a a, a crazy feat or has been for so long to do mm. multiple shows like every weekend because the diuretic strategy that pe- where people were employing had to be totally different. It was based, um, and this is not a, a knock on Chris Aceto, but Chris Aceto's mm. job is, is to look He's like he's this, he literally has this, you know, um, intuition about what's going to work and he sees this visually and he picks up on things. Maybe he can't even put into words, mm. but you have to sort of go with the flow and right. that's what happens. What people use, how many, how many of what the diazide, aldactone, whatever it is they're using, varies so much week by week. Whereas the way I do peak week, it's all in that article, it's in my book, etc. Um, you can do it every week. You could. I, mm-hmm. I had one one buddy of mine who started competing in the seventies, could be the seventies, eighties, nineties, two thousands. It's actually going to do an over sixty Mister Universe here probably next year, wow. um, and. The way he does, the way I do the peak week, you, you make a little bit of a step forward in terms of conditioning, too. So you don't lose out on your diet. It's not like you missed the week of dieting because you did a peak week practice. Right. Mm-hmm. You think I did it like seven or eight times in the span of 10 weeks? Oh, wow. Because he was ready early and he uh-huh. wanted to practice that and fine tune it. And he was just kept on, you know, it didn't bring him back. So then he could eat really, really well. He kept on sort of deloading repeatedly as you mm-hmm. dieted in. And, and, with him, one of the things is that he was so he was so stressful during the peak week, as mm. it can be. You know, it's like it's the, yeah. everything's coming down to this. If I mess this up, so once he, it's kind of like preparing for a speech, right? I still get nervous right. before I have to give a talk, right? But well, if you, you do, do it do over it so- and over again, right. right? Then then it then it's just natural, and then after all the all the guessing work is out of it. Yeah, and you know that it's going to work. Yeah, that saves a lot. You know, I, I would used to do it yeah. with my athletes as well. Just practice many many times until it's perfect. Mm-hmm. But then not use diuretics because of course the diuretics will, you know, the, the overcompensation and you yeah. lose performance for a couple of days afterwards. So this is the reason why all these athletes are so tired and exhausted, uh, oh, yeah. excluding the vasodilators. I mean, that makes you tired and exhausted also. Right. Leave, right. Um, the adenosine uh, monophosphate injections. Um, yeah. It yeah, makes out. you very, very, yeah. Wipes you out. So for the guys that, you know, use diuretics to, practice their peaking protocol like a couple days later if they start going heavy into the gym again it's it's quite risky Mm -hmm. to 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 you know get muscle tears or just other kinds of small injuries and that will sit you back i've seen it happen with a couple guys that wanted to practice their peak a month out and Mm -hmm. it works with using diuretic just a small amount three days of aldactone and maybe half a diazide and then monday during the uh, gym doing chest and they get injured. Yeah, because are these these guys that have a lot more water, they have sort of rebound water wise, and now their chest is fuller and no, they they're, a great pump. yeah, no, no, they're, they're just the, so depleted they're from the water, still, right? Yeah. And, and the sodium uh, electrolyte imbalance is there, and then they want to train at the heavy uh, compounds because they're already adding in the super draw and all that stuff. So they think they're strong, but the muscle yeah. is like like dehydrated and stru- structurally impaired. And yeah. that's when they start injuring themselves, you know? So, you, yeah. So I, I really like this approach that you documented in that, in that article. And I think yeah. a lot of kidneys are saved this yeah. way. You know, though, it can go away. What you, what you said both ways, you can have someone, I think, who's got an electrolyte imbalance. Mm-hmm. And then maybe they have, with their, their training, you get a little bit of a, a spasm, so to speak, during. Mm-hmm. 
and that's what causes the muscle pull. But also some guys go in and they're just full of the house, right? Yeah. And they go down to like to do a leg press, let's say, and like they can only go down like two thirds as far as they normally could because their legs are so full and pumped. <laughs> exactly. And, and, and it feels great, right? You look awesome because you're still uh-huh. lean. The vascularity is out of control, but that's when a lot of people, times people will get muscle tears as well. Yeah. Because there's yeah, just so, be super, so much yeah, stress, stress on the connective tissue. Yeah. Right, right. 